Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Wednesday, October 14th at 7.17 p.m. Wow! <laughs> Seems like I, that happened the other day. Well, I know I haven't put up a video in a few days. Uh, I just have been very tired and I thank you guys for backing down on your emails so I wouldn't have so many to go over. But this is a letter from Dawn. And these two messages I have got to share. Because I just think this is the Lord speaking to us. Okay. This first one is under the small straws in a soft wind by Marsha Burns. Alright. This has to do with harvest. In a vision. I saw, now this is a vision. I take visions much more strongly than messages and dreams, even though I take them seriously too and pray for discernment over them. All right, this was a vision. In a vision, I saw a large cornfield ready for harvest. As I watched, I saw people who had been hidden in the corn stalks began to emerge. And I heard the Lord say that those who have been hidden in a place of obscurity will begin to come forth and experience breakthrough with varying degrees of significance. For some Breaking through will be life-changing. And for others, it will be moments of unusual clarity of purpose and direction. Praise God for His goodness. And the, the, the verse she attached is Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. So if you feel like you've been hidden in a place of obscurity and you've been praying for a gift or for God to show you, what what can I do in these end days to help bring people around or whatever? She is saying that this dream, apparently... God has gave her, you know, a lot of times when you get a vision, the Lord will download into your brain. However, he does that. Well, from what we've studied on Grafted in Team Jesus, uh, we feel that it was, that it's the, pine the pineal gland that is the way God speaks to us. Which is why the New Agers try so hard to reach a, a moment of, uh, or a time period of spirituality by doing that yoga business and trying to connect their chakras and uh, they do something to try to get power out of their pineal gland we'll see because demons are whether they're aware of it or not they know from their boss satan that the pineal gland is our route to spirituality so when people talk about the pineal gland being something how God speaks to us and us to him understand it's not talking about what the new age people do alright all we have to do is pray and be have a relationship with the Lord to hear from him okay um, so it says for some breaking through will be life changing and for others it will be moments of unusual clarity of purpose and direction all right how can you do how can you hear when you're not hearing 
I suggest fasting and praying more. And if you're able, get on your knees. And if if you feel it to or... I'm going to tell you, I, I prayed a lot on my face, uh, flat out on the floor. I just can't, and I maybe should force myself to, even though it stuffs my nose up, to where all I can think about is how my nose feels, and then it's a distraction, you know. When you pray, you don't want distractions of any kind, so you do what you can, okay? All right, now this next one is titled, The Trumpet is Sounding, and it was given or put out October 12th. Okay, October 12th, 2020, at 10.13 p.m. Given to or put up by Warriors for God, part one of two. So I should get the other part tomorrow. First, she puts, or he puts, Joel, from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble. Um, yeah, that's right, tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is close at hand. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. Before them fire devours, behind them a flame blazes. Before them the land is like the Garden of Eden, behind them a desert waste. Nothing escapes them. Blow the trumpet. The trumpet sounding is long and it is long to get and it is long. I wonder if it means longing. Is that a typo? I think so. The trumpet sounding is long, and it is longing to get everyone's attention, both the slave and the free, saved and unsaved, so that they, so they may see there is a changing of the guard and a changing in the world. It is before us right now. It is the midnight hour. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Pursue God with everything you have. Flee the judgment and destruction that is coming. Fear God. Love God. And flee evil as if you are being pursued by a wall of flames moving at the speed of a racehorse. Run, run to the hill of the Lord and you will not fall. Throw off every weight and sin. Abandon all and forsake all as if your very life depends on it, because it does. Cast off unbelief, complacency, compromise, and aim for the prize. Focus, concentrate, be steadfast and determined. Set your face like flint and be unmovable unshakable and unstoppable be a calf released from the stall fleeing the evil desires of youth and pressing on toward that goal to win the prize which is fellowship and intimacy 
with God and being perfectly conformed to the image of his son. There is nothing else to live for, for that is our destiny. Okay, I think this is the person talking, don't you? Like it's a sermon. You need to throw off every weight and sin. You need to run after God now, or that flame is going to consume your flesh. The flame has always been there. You are now out of time. Our God is a consuming fire. You will either be consumed by the fire and devoured or consumed with him and be on fire for him. Having allowed him to purge all impurities and imperfections, and embrace the fiery trials which have come to purify you from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God before he comes for us. He comes to us to purge us and prepare us for the wedding. And... They put Malachi 3, 2. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. I, I remember King James Version used to say fuller's soap. Uh, I think it was Fuller's. The one they made a company started selling soap door to door before Amway, and I believe or Fuller Brush Company. They they sold not just soap, brushes and mops and brooms and stuff like that because you didn't have a lot of stores back in the thirties and forties. The retail business was pretty small back then, except in the big cities. You had them in the big cities. But I believe it was the Fuller Brush Company. And it used to say Fuller Soap. Like a Fuller Soap. Anyway, um, and I bet they took that from the Bible. I think they were pretty successful for a while. Uh, and probably until stores, you know, came around. But um, anyway, for he will be like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. In other words, God is going to burn off the dross. Like that's the bad part on a piece of silver or some gold. You want to purify it so it's just gold. You have to run it through heat, very high heat. And launderer's soap indicates cleaning you up. Let him clean you up. And it may not even feel good. And it may not be pleasant. But some people still need to go through a cleansing, a, a type of tribulation that where you're giving up stuff. You're agreeing to commit to the Lord and you're throwing off your sins. And it may hurt for a while, especially if it means breaking up with somebody you're living with or sleeping with. And you really care about them, but you realize, I love the Lord and I can't do that anymore. And they don't want to get married, say. Well, okay, then you just break up with them. And that hurts. Like being scrubbed hard with a soap and brush. So to speak. Okay. Uh, now, now I thought this was really strange. When I read this, because... It was put up October 14th. That is today, right? Okay. 
It says, I know you are tired. This is supposedly from the Lord. I know you are tired. It is time to rest. You have some time. Do not get involved in anything else just now. The past little while has been hard. You know my word about the yoke. I am in my side. I am in my side of the yoke. Oh, I never thought of it that way. Get in your side. We can get this done. I know you have a responsibility for something. Yes, I feel I have a responsibility to my subscribers. And uh, anyway, let me finish this. Um, I know you have a responsibility for something, but get it done with ease by following my lead and it will get done quickly. I just think that was so timely. But here's the funny thing about it. Not so funny, really. Because a couple of days ago, I read a message that said something like, I know you are tired, but this is no time to rest. And I was like, but Lord, I just, I just can't do anything right now. And then this one came up. The verse she put with it is Matthew 11, 28-30. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's, and Bev Robinson is the one that received that word. So maybe it was for her, but they put it up because they probably thought it was for some others too. And I'm like, this sounds just like it's for me. I mean, maybe some others. Are you overdoing it? in whatever you have to do or what God has given you to do in your whole lifestyle. And maybe you need to back off for a few days. I've tried to take some days, but then I'm like, you know, I'll be going, I'll be going ahead and doing my email and I see these videos and I'm like, oh, I got to share this, you know? And so there I am, you know, I go ahead and make videos and uh, I'm I'm just uh, I will keep doing what I can but not as much and I know that when I added on or let myself be added on the team at Team Jesus, it might seem like I took on more, but really I just sit here and listen and I learn. Plus I contribute and they learn. And some things I mean to share the next day and then I forget. I've got to remember to take a notepad and pen when I go on. Like she's she's uh doing a live stream tonight and I told her I said just I'll watch the videos tomorrow. Just go ahead without me tonight because we don't really pitch in during a, a live stream. Uh, we have, uh, 
There was one just the other day that she put out, and then she said, what do you think? She was asking for our opinions on live stream, and I wasn't on that one. So um, the others were like, you know, they're kind of quiet until one speaks, and then another will, you know, kind of get things going. But anyway, I want you to know that even though that may, what it does is it, it keeps me from doing my email or my comments, but it's something good for me. Fellowship and learning. I just need to learn to balance, you know, maybe not do it so many nights. And I'll talk to Kathy about that. But I don't really do anything. It's not taking energy. It's just taking time away from doing emails and comments. So sometimes that's why I don't get them done. But I usually can get things when I'm not tired. I get them done before I go on with them. See, they do it pretty late in the evening. So anyway, I just wanted to make that clear. Um, I hope that this, this message, if you want to call it that, I guess you'd call it more of a sermon by Warriors from for God. I don't know if that's a YouTube channel, but I thought it was a wonderful message. So for this one, I'm going to end it, okay? So I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over the internet connection, well, over each and every one of us and our devices and our internet connections. So with that, I'm going to say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.